Hi there, this is Tyler here from the Weekend Warriors Show Recap Podcast. I'm coming at you from Davenport, Iowa. Um, This is uh, the night number one of two nights here at Kilkenny's. Uh, I thought I would do something a little different. I would uh, have a little bit of guitar going in the background so it doesn't seem as awkward to kind of talk to myself. So I... I was really just kind of bored tonight because I'm still kind of wired from the show and, uh, and, uh, it's about 3 a.m. and I just was playing some guitar and I was like, oh, I gotta record this podcast sometime anyway and nothing else to do because I can't sleep right now. So, uh, we got to the show probably around 7 o'clock. We don't, didn't go on until 9. Took about, a, say, hour 30, hour 40 to get everything set up. Blair came, which was cool, always fun. And Laurelin was here. And uh, we, we did the full foot percussion, so I did my uh, foot drums. And he did his uh, drum machine. It's just always nice to have an extra set of good ears, you know, to really listen to what's being, like, when you do sound by yourself, you can never really tell what it sounds like out in the audience, because you can't hear yourself and sing at the same time, so the best you can really do is point, like, a monitor with the main mix at you, if it's a similar speaker, you'll kind of hear what the audience is hearing, but... But having somebody actually go out there and like, oh, his vocals need to be turned up, or oh, his guitar is too loud and you can't hear hear the too bassy, you know, stuff like that. And you can just fix it really quick instead of having to like play and go out and listen to the guitar separate, and then uh, just hope. Pretty much a lot of it is just you know hoping you make it sound okay. Um, I mean, I would I. I think that, you know, since I've been doing it for a long time, I can kind of tell. And when it's just one person, I think it's a lot easier to make sound decent um, just with a guitar and vocal. But then sometimes, you know, I'm doing the foot drums by myself and doing Laurelin's vocals, and it's kind of hard to tell. Um, But uh, having Blair there just makes everything a lot easier in a lot of ways. Now it is louder when he's there, so that's something that does make a little bit of a difference. It's a lot harder to make something loud sound good, especially in the room that, you know, Kilkenny's is kind of a billowy kind of hall, and the crowd gets really loud, but like I said, it was a late crowd, so we could get it sounding pretty good at a reasonable level in the beginning. Eventually, of course, the volume came up and up and up. Um, but, uh, anyway, so, uh, I had a drum malfunction tonight. I, uh, my, well, my foot, my kick pedal has, uh, pretty much zip ties kind of connect in the the pedal to the beater, which isn't, you know, very classy necessarily. My, my kick drum is just beat up. I talked to my uh, boss, who's a drummer, and he, uh, I showed him when I had to use the zip ties, you know, that uh, it's like, I probably should get something, a better rig. He's like, I think those will work pretty good. And they really do. I mean, as long as you have a bunch of extra ones, um, which luckily I did tonight, but you know, I, I got, uh, the, the zip ties broke in the middle of the song, of course, so I had to wing, uh, I was, what song, it was, uh, Ho Hey by the Lumineers, we were covering, um, which is a pretty percussive song, unfortunately, but, uh, I, I, um, did, uh, I had the tap shoe and the foot tambourine on my left foot, so, you know, I could still kind of kind of do it. Obviously, I had to do some on-the-fly thinking in the moment and make it work, and it did. It worked okay. 
and then I went, I, I brought some extra ones this time for some reason. I was like, I must have known that it had been a while because it's probably been like a year since I've changed, changed the zip ties. And uh, so I threw some extra ones in my bag and uh, put the bags up in the apartment above the bar. So in the middle of the set, I kind of had to go um, grab the zip ties. And then of course, two of them broke immediately when I put them on. <laughs> And then uh, kind of working a little bit. Um, so that was kind of annoying. But, you know, equipment malfunction is pretty standard. I'm lucky it doesn't happen more, honestly. But uh, so I got that taken care of. Blair was, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't think he's as used to maybe playing with other people because he's been playing a lot by himself, which is great, you know, makes him a more solid performer for sure. But uh, I think uh, Laurelyn was singing a little bit too much on his stuff, and her mix wasn't great. She wasn't, she kind of missed sound check, so um, and she wasn't, she hadn't really played as much lately anyway. She's probably just a little rough. We all have rough nights any, anyway. Um, so she was singing like really loud to the mic and uh, for his songs and not necessarily hitting a lot of the best notes all the time. She was doing okay. I mean, I was there. I heard what it sounded like. But uh, I don't think Blair was really feeling what she was doing necessarily. So... Uh, made for a long night it was I think it, I think it sounded better than he probably thought it did and that's usually the case with musicians at least if you're like me I always think it's kind of something's a little off I'm just like I feel like I'm more used to playing you know just acoustic and how that sounds and how that feels uh, like unmiked unfortunately Fortunately, I think that's how I practice most of the time, which is, I don't know if that's lazy or what, but I guess my theory is if you can't sound good into a PA system unless you sound good um, acoustically. If you can't play an acoustic guitar and sing and sound good, how are you? How is that going to get any better if you're um, mic'd up and plugged in? So I practice, you know, acoustic a lot of the time, but there is some things about playing, uh, th singing through a mic that's just, it's just different, you know? The I remember the first time I sang into a mic, um, well, not the first time I sang into a mic, but in front of people sang into a mic, and uh, it was um, my know, junior, junior year, maybe? Sophomore, junior year, somewhere in there. It was a talent show, and I was playing. Um, <laughs> I was playing uh, "Flake" by Jack Johnson, and I think I did a Ben Harper song too for like a talent show. And like, there were no monitors, of course, and I just sounded so bad. I just felt so weird. I didn't, like to hear your voice if you've never done it like that. It's but like I was so young too, and I really was terrible. I barely am not terrible now I'm barely to tolerable but um, back then it was like ouch if you had to listen to me but uh, anyway so um, like hearing your voice like in a really loud and kind of far away because you don't have monitors you don't even know how it's supposed to sound um, so uh, I just remember being like what is going on why can't I sing the notes so there is there is like an element of just um you should rehearse into like a PA system I guess but I I don't do that a lot I'm guilty of I mean I practice a lot but it's just acoustic most of the time and I guess since uh I play almost every weekend I think that you know I'll be that's that's kind of my practice in the PA is every Friday and Saturday night, but sometimes it just doesn't cut it. <laughs> probably, probably, I don't know. Every room's so different. Like it's hard to. 
every sound setup's different. You can never really know. The only constant you can really keep is like yourself, you know? So I guess that's why I practice acoustic most of the time. But, uh, so that was night number one. We'll kind of see. Hopefully the next one goes a little better. I don't think this one was bad. But it always takes a little, you know, this, by the second day you're much tighter. You're used to the room a little bit, so um, tomorrow will be better. Though Blair, Blair left, so um, he wasn't going to play the second night anyway. So um, tomorrow Dave might come, which that might be interesting. Dave, the conga player. part two of the Davenport Iowa Kilkenny shows thanks for listening so far hopefully hopefully I didn't bore anybody to sleep or maybe hopefully I did maybe that's why you listen to podcasts I don't know I guess sometimes I put them on to ease the transition into sleep a little easier with this guitar playing in the background I think I was hoping it would make me tired, I guess, but uh, anyway, I will uh, talk to you for part two. See you then. Welcome to part two of the Weekend Warrior Show Recap Podcast, talking about Davenport, Iowa, night number two. I'm going to kind of back up here a little bit and talk about the previous night. We had a little air up mattress malfunction um, at the little apartment that the bar supplies us. So uh, we decided ultimately to make the trek back, trek back to Bloomington because uh, I wasn't going to be able to just sleep on the floor. Since I couldn't sleep on the floor, um, I, it was either like choo- it was either choosing to drive two hours to sleep for like five hours and then drive two hours back or I could just be really tired for the next show so we decided to trek back and uh, um, so that was an early morning drive and we got back got a little bit of sleep Um, Laurelin decided to sit the night number two out I made the two hour drive back got there pretty early got everything set up Dave decided to come the conga player, and he brought, like, a van full of people, so that was cool. Um, It's always good to have some, you know, friendly support in the audience. So uh, I got everything set up pretty reasonably. I mean, all my stuff was still there from the night before, so I was just kind of moving it forward and kind of resetting it for, you know, playing more solo type. Um, I did the foot drum still, and Dave did congas, bongos, and he had a couple cymbals, um, and it was a really fun show. And since Blair was there the night before, and he helped me really get it dialed in, I think that really ended up and helped the second night. And just playing, you know, doing the vocals yourself all night, you can really kind of feel how the room is. You get really used to it if you're doing every song right in a row. You can kind of feel it out a lot better. So, you know, by like half hour in I was like completely warmed up and like knew the room and it was really busy uh definitely a lot busier the second night than the first night and the the first night it was like a late crowd so for that last hour it got really busy but it was it was wasn't packed from the beginning but I mean there was definitely a lot of people in the beginning and then by like 10 30 10 10 30 it was just like super packed and just Dave playing just adds, you know, such a percussive element. I feel like it just makes it so much easier to dance to and kind of feel the vibe of, even if the audience doesn't necessarily know the song, um, they can still kind of feel it a little bit more because, um, and he takes a lot of the pressure off me because he's (laughs) so wild to watch. He's, you know, kind of all over the place. So, um, he takes a lot of the tension off of me. And if I need, like, a little break, I can just be like, hey, Dave, play, no, go. And he'll uh, 
he'll do a little jam and uh, take the focus off me and kind of catch my breath and get back to... Because doing those foot drums, I don't know if you if anybody would really expect it to be such a such an aerobic workout. You're just like, sometimes when you're singing and doing those, and, uh, you know, it's just, it, t- it takes the wind out of you if you're do- doing it right in a row, right in a row, right in a row. When Blair's there, you know, I get a break like every other song. So it's not as hard, um, but it, it's, it's, it's kind of a give-take thing because if you're doing it all night by yourself, you definitely get more, more worn out, especially by the end of the night. But you get used to the breath that it takes to do it a lot easier. When Blair's there, I'm doing it every other song, so I don't really get as much in the flow necessarily, but I have a lot more wind per song. So, um, like I said, it's kind of a give-take type thing. And the other cool thing about having Dave there is he's really good about pushing the originals so he he ends up and makes me have a little more courage to play originals in a bar that is mostly a cover bar, you know. So, um, and he just spices those up real good, so people don't mind as much if they haven't heard the song. And I feel like I was watching. Oh, I I said you know I say all the time when we're playing like you can check us out on Pandora, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, all that stuff. Uh, and I could see, like, people doing it when I would say it, and we got a lot more stickers and download cards out, I think, than we normally do. Good tips, which was always a bonus. Um, I was going to say this story earlier, but right when I got there, um, people had seen a video that uh, had been posted the night before that the bar had posted of Blair singing Everybody Wants to Rule the World, I can't remember the real name of that song. But anyway, um, so they were asking us about that song, if we were going to play it tonight, and, uh, you know, asking us if we do a lot of 80s covers, which I don't really do a lot of 80s, 80s covers. It's more of a Blair thing. So that was a little like, uh, uh-oh. <laughs> and the other thing is Blair is like a natural, one of those naturally good singers. I am not, you know, so having people come in with the expectation of hearing Blair sing a bunch of covers that I don't know, and then they come in, they see me, who's not as good of a singer, and I'm not doing the songs that they were maybe anticipating, isn't, you know, it just puts you at a little bit of uncomfortability right from the way, right from the beginning. And, but I think, we, I think we won them over pretty fast. Like I said with Dave... Uh, he makes it a little bit easier just because and he's just such a happy like go lucky guy he'll talk to anybody he'll tell anybody to check out our music on all those platforms so he'll, he'll go as far as uh grabbing somebody's like not out of their hands but like here I'll do it for you just just give me your phone and I'll a- add us on Spotify for you he did that a couple times after the show which was pretty funny um but uh yeah, so it's it's weird just coming in to... It wasn't really a negative energy necessarily, but it was like a little... Like I disappointed them right away with like the first things I said to them. And they were asking for songs that Blair knows that I don't. So it's kind of an interesting energy right off the bat. But after we did some originals, they seemed to, those same people I could tell were like paying attention. I'm pretty sure one of them even put like a 20 in our tip jar. So it was good to see. And that's always a relief when those, those people that aren't really naysayer, they, I wouldn't call them naysayers, but they're like kind of weary after you, talk, after I talk to them that, you know, you kind of win them over. I try not to watch the crowd too much because that gets so in your head. You know, you're, you're only paying attention to the the people that aren't into it, you know, you're watching, watching to see who's grooving. If they're grooving, you kind of move on, and then you get your eye catches somebody who is just like not feeling it at all. And who knows where their head's at? You're in a bar at, after nine o'clock on a Friday or Saturday night, but you know you're trying to kind of win them over, and you shouldn't really be trying to do that. You should be trying to um, be in the moment. And uh, try to be like pure joy, pretty much. Because people don't really come out to watch you to see you second-guess yourself. They come out to watch you so that 
they, they, they see you having such a good time that it's contagious, you know, and it gets into their mindset and their bloodstream, you know, that energy of just pure joy. And, of course, you don't always get there, but I think this time we definitely did. So it was, it was a relief to, you know, finally have a, a show like that again. You, you know, you, not every show is like that. You just try to make every show like that, and you can probably get, like, above 50% of shows like that, but you're always going to run into little issues or a bad night, off night. Or, you know, your band's not vibing with each other or you know you haven't played in a long time so everything's sloppy just a bunch of there's a bunch of x factors always so sometimes it's hard to get there i did think it was cool to play the first night one way with blair and low and the foot percussions blair's beat buddy and backing tracks and the second night just me and dave i mean it was a completely different set essentially you know it was um because i do a lot of the covers that blair does and then, um, but I do them, you know, my way, kind of. And then I do a lot of covers that Blair, that I don't do when Blair's there. So, you know, it's just a night, when you're playing two nights in a row and people, some of the people see it twice in a row, it's almost like a whole different experience, which I think is a cool thing. But anyway, and then after, I got to hang out with Dave and the people he brought, his twin brother and uh, a bu- mutual friend, after that, so that was a lot of fun. Um, I ended up staying way too late, and then driving back, and then um, I don't know. I guess I thought the sun was gonna come up earlier than it did, because I just was hoping that the light would kind of keep me awake. But it didn't end up and start to get light till like probably six forty-five. I ended up and had to pull over to like a rest stop and sleep for twenty minutes, about halfway. I ended up driving you know, eight hours that whole over the weekend. So that's a long, it's a lot of time in the car. But uh, that ride home was pretty rough. I was having to, you know, chew gum and slap myself in the face and put the air on really cold and pretty much anything you could think of to keep moving. But eventually I made it, and the weekend overall, I think, was a positive, and uh, it was a good time. And we're back there at the beginning of next month. So looking forward to it again. Anyway, so this has been the Weekend Warrior Show Recap Podcast. I appreciate anybody that takes the time to listen. Hopefully I didn't bore anybody to death. Um, and, I mean, if you made it this far, I guess you've been, you've been into it a little bit. But anyway, um, I will talk to you guys next time. This coming weekend I have uh, Dr. McKay's here in town and uh, indoor farmer's market in the morning. So that's what I'll be talking about next time. Thanks for listening. Have a good rest of your week.